Hello, can every can someone hear me? Because I I've been receiving a message that no one has been receiving uh, hearing a single thing at all. Can everyone hear me now? Great. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, just for the sake of it, I'll just um, start all over again. And um, so yeah, my name is Chun Ming, and um, I'm from All In Data. I'm here to to help you to design your proper infrastructure in order to scale, right? Why do I have this topic for this webinar series? Mainly is because um, we have Puppet in our infrastructure and companies are adopting Puppet. Either they are starting to adopt Puppet or they have Puppet in place already. The thing here is there are always documentation that say, okay, this is how you set up Puppet or this is how you implement Puppet, so and so, etc. But the thing here is they do not have the guideline or a recommended architecture or or a diagram that shows how should I design a puppet infrastructure that scales. So in this case, how are we going to scale it? So let's start off with our puppet infrastructure. Okay, we have our usual standard Puppet infrastructure, whether it's Puppet Enterprise or Puppet Open Source. We always have the Puppet Master right up there on the top, and then we have all the Puppet agents connecting to it, right? So then after that, we have all the agents being in a defined state, picking up all the catalogs and configuration from Puppet Master, making sure it is in a consistent state as we define in our Puppet Manifest as we want to be in the infrastructure as a code. So then again, we will you know, expand this infrastructure a little bit by adding a puppet DB, whereby then now we can use something more of a external node classifier, whereby we, we now we can you know, classify nodes separately by using an existing setup of puppet DB, or we can use a exporter resource with a full advanced cost set and so forth. All right, <clears throat> so now we have this standard setup here that allows us to serve hundreds of thousands of servers. But then again, that is not sufficient when we have demands, right? Because as we expand, things grow, right? Pretty sure your company is not just confined to your current location. It's probably global or you have... Uh, probably thousands and thousands of uh, puppet agents. So as demands increase, the number of puppet agents or the nodes or the servers that you want to manage with puppet in your infrastructure increase by at least 10 times or more. Because now you see, hey, puppet is doing so well in my infrastructure and it's doing so well in a production environment or a development environment. Now I would like to add it other environments or I would like to puppetize all of my servers in, in the entire infrastructure in all, in all environments. So number of servers increase. So how can we sustain it? On top of that, then we come to a point where we say we keep hitting OOM, which is out of memories or full disk space. We keep hitting them. Right? So we can keep hitting them because of all the puppet agents requests that keep coming in. So now our puppet master become a really, really little busy bee. Okay? So it's working overtime to keep up with all the requests that keeps coming in from the entire setup. And then, of course, the next thing is the network congestion. Let's just say you have 7,000 to 10,000 servers in your setup. But how do we move forward from there, right? We have a single Puppet Master. So if all 10,000 servers are trying to connect to Puppet Master, even if it's on a varied interval, we are still bound to congest the network because everyone is trying to connect to this one single Puppet Master regardless of where the Puppet Master is. What happened next? We will have a increase increase 
CPU load because now the puppet master is overloaded. That's one of the problems. So how do we actually uh, proceed with that? And obviously, then we have things like geolocation. What happens if your data center is in LA, New York, and then your puppet master is in London? There is a latency between them. Or you have global data centers around everywhere, and you have a single central puppet master in one single central location. So the network latency between your data centers to that puppet master will have will be pretty high, isn't it? So there will be in delay in in the packet transmission and so forth. Of course, the next golden question: high availability. You know, architecture teams will never let you go if you do not have a high availability design for your infrastructure. So how do we actually design? A HA public infrastructure. So this is what we are going to discuss and how we're going to design it together in this webinar series. So obviously this is just a sim you know a few lists, popular list of concerns whereby you know I need to scale my infrastructure because so and so I have this so and so concern. And so now we move towards our highlight of this webinar series, okay, whereby I'll say now it's time to size up. We want to increase the capacity of our puppet master. Increasing capacity is not necessarily mean beefing up the server, giving it a one terabyte trunk network, or not giving it a monstrous 64 core CPU or 128 GB of RAM or enterprise grade SSD. It's not necessarily that. Right? When we design an infrastructure for Puppet, it's actually a lot more simpler than you think. Okay? Majority of you, maybe I'll say half and half, will be using Puppet Enterprise or Puppet Open Source. And of course, we manage Puppet using Puppet. So with this, it makes things a lot more easier when we want to scale things up. So let's see how I would like to design an infrastructure that will scale. First up will be a multi-master setup with a shared CA server. Okay. First of all, we have the stand standalone standard puppet master setup, all in one together with puppet DB. So this puppet master has the puppet server, has the CA server, has the reporting or has the puppet db integration all in one right so basically this is the standalone setup then again this is not any different from your current puppet master setup and where all the agents connect to it but obviously now your puppet master is going to be overloaded we have 10000s of servers we want to uh, you know we want to in we want to you know saturate the runs and so on so what do we do we create Another subset of Papa Masters. Okay, what happened? Now these Papa Masters will do will be the one that serve the request to all our puppet agents. Okay. Mm -hmm. These Papa Masters, as you can see, they are connected to the CA server on the top. And which what does this mean? These masters at the bottom, they will not be the one authenticating the CA request from all the puppet masters or from the puppet agent. Why do we not want that? Because if each of these puppet master has its own individual CA, then the CA servers between all of them will be out of sync, right? So we want to centralize all the CA requests, certificate signing, storage, and so forth. We will see the rationale in the design later as we move along. So we have this puppet master cluster now. Here we have at the bottom we have three puppet masters that will serve the catalogs, they'll compile the catalog. Whenever it receives a CA request or authentication authorization request, it will forward it to the CA server above it. So and so that CA server now can authenticate, authorize, and then tell the next then return back the result to the 
pop up master and say, hey, yes, this pop up agent now is authorized to uh, request for catalog and so forth. Fairly simple enough. So then the next thing is when we add the puppet agents in. When we add these puppet agents in, we can say, oh, now I have a collection, a cluster of puppet master. How do I actually tell my puppet agent which puppet master to connect to, which CA server to connect to, and so on? Right? You don't have to do that. All right? All you need to do is we put a load balancer. Okay? Either you put a hardware load balancer or software load balancer. You can do use a DNS load balancing, or you can use a floating virtual IP that floats from one server to the other. And this layer here, load balancing layer, will tell the agents, okay, this puppet master A is currently overloaded. Please go to puppet master B, C, D, or E. So it's a very pretty much the same request. So here. Now, our entire setup here is pretty much now clustered at load balance. So, the num imagine if we can serve 3,000, up to 3,000 servers per puppet master with a, proper, with a proper configuration. What if we have a cluster of them? Let's just say four puppet masters. We can aggregate them or average it to be maybe 4,000 to 12,000 servers, right? And not to mention, all these puppet masters load are evenly distributed amongst them. So you isolate the problem of location or bandwidth congestion, high CPU load, high memory, or however you want to see it. We don't have to worry about the CA configuration authentication because when the puppet master agent, when a puppet agent connects to the load balancer, you get redirected to one of the puppet masters. Okay? And then whenever there's a request, whether for a catalog or CA signing, it will for a CA signing, it will, the puppet master will redirect it to the CA server above and then return the result back. For the catalog, the puppet master that is being redirected to is responsible for compiling the catalog and sending things sending it back down to the puppet agent. So now, your setup is pretty much clustered. The, cat, the, the whole setup here, we can just put them behind a simple load balancer, like maybe a software-based load balancer, like k -shape proxy. But if you are using DNS load balancing, by all means, you can just simply point all these puppet agents to a DNS Record that is load balancing all the puppet masters. And then as all for all the puppet masters, you just need to configure them to point the CA services to the CA server on the top. And with that said, we have a shared CA, we have a cluster setup, we have a load balance setup, and the number of agents that we can support per infrastructure now has increased tenfold. And the next time you want to support more servers in your infrastructure, all you need to do is replicate the puppet master setup and add them behind the load balancer. And there we go. It's as simple as it is. Not exactly that complicated. But however, some people had a concern that says, so I have a single puppet CA server on the top, right? So it's a single point of failure. What happened if my CA service fails? What happened if the puppet master fails? What will happen? Because then now all the authentication cannot go through and all the puppet agent runs will fail. So in this case, I would like to introduce you to a CA server setup where it's nothing that spectacular. It's a very simple setup, really. Okay, so this is the setup we have earlier. We have a single CA, share CA on the top that connects to the Papa DB. And we have all the Papa masters at the bottom. All right. So now this CA server holds all our certificate, all the Papa masters and all the agent. So what happened? So when we designed this, we wanted it to be HA. 
in the event that this CA server fails, so what should we do about it? In order to prevent this, we add another puppet master, right? And this puppet master will act as a another CA server, as a cold CA server. Okay, now we have two CA servers, but then again, how do we get the certificates across? Without any complex technology or whatnot, we can do a simple rsync, like maybe every five minutes or so, or every minute, to sync all the certificates there is from the hot CA server to the cold CA server. So now, the standby CA server will have all the certificate from the active CA server. In the event the primary CA server goes down, you can probably switch the DNS name from one CA server to another CA server. Again, there will, there, you might have a slight downtime of maybe a couple of minutes where it's not able to authenticate while switching DNS names or you can simply use whatever sort of load balancing mechanism that you have, right? For example, like your DNS load balancing or uh, virtual IP or a simple just a D DNS switch. For me, I will favor a floating virtual IP or a DNS switch works for me. In order for the DNS switch to work, I will set the DNS T TTL for the CA servers to be really, really low to as low as 300 seconds for five minutes. So my SLA downtime for recovery will be just five minutes to recover or probably even shorter depending on our setup. So and there we go, ladies and gentlemen, is our pretty much of our CA setup. And now we have a cluster setup behind a load balancer which will have a CA server, shared CA server, and now our CA server also has been sort of like high availability, right? With an acceptable downtime of possibly five minutes or lesser. But then again, if you look there, we still have a single point of failure component in, in terms of our upper DB. So, how do we set our PuppetDB to be highly available? So, some might argue PuppetDB might be important, some might not be important. For those who are using the enterprise dash, Puppet Enterprise, or Foreman and whatnot, and then you will very likely store data into the PuppetDB. And also, if you are using exporter resources, you would definitely need PuppetDB. Okay, so what is PuppetDB? So PuppetDB is a, an application layer that sits on top of a database backend and start processing all the, of the Puppet storage via an API. It's not a database itself. It's just an API layer, an application, an application layer that talks to a database. Well, for the chosen database or recommended database, it's always PostgreSQL. So, whatever request or data that goes into the PuppetDB, it will be stored into PostgreSQL Server. Okay, so how do we actually now make this highly available? We want to make sure this setup of ours doesn't fail at any point of time. So, we will use an existing Postgres setup. Okay, we add another Postgres server. Right, because remember, PuppetDB is just pro storing all the data in the Postgres. So basically, essentially, Postgres database is more important. So what here we can do is we can use a existing Postgres replication setup to achieve the HA. So, and for this, we will use the hot standby method, which is when the PuppetDB receives data from Puppet Master, it then writes it into the PostgreSQL database, and then Postgres Master will replicate the data down to Postgres Slave. 
and then whatever data that you have will on the master will always on, be on the slave and this will be your standard postgres hot standby setup which is similar to mysql's master slave setup the catch here is it's not exactly auto fail over because in order to promote the slave to become the master and demote the master to become a slave, there are a series of commands that you need to run. So these commands, you either need to run manually or you need to trigger it from some sort of application. But my preference is, I would prefer to trigger it manually for the promotion of slave to master and master to slave. It's simply because we are dealing with data. Obviously, I do not want to lose data. Nobody wants to lose data. So this is where some sort of manual work on my end will have to take place where I promote the slave to become the master database when the master database fails. Then when the master the failed master database comes back up, I will demote it to slave. And then it should start replicating again from the new Postgres master. And then that way, our cluster is now all healthy again. But then again, there are some companies or some teams that will argue that say, it's not acceptable. I want to have a real HA failover setup or whatnot. So how do we go about that? Again, we have the Puppet DB setup, but this time we have the Postgres setup. But before we can connect Puppet DB to any of our Postgres servers, we put a tool in between Puppet DB and our Postgres servers, and this tool or application is what we call PG Tool 2. Okay, this tool allows us to have a multi-master setup which means like active primary master and secondary master setup and in the event of either master fails it will the other master will become be promoted automatically as the primary master so it's very similar again to mysql's mmm multi setup or mysql's galera setup whereby it has auto automatic failovers and so forth. So how our data flows will look like that? When the data comes in from Puppet Master into the Puppet DB, Puppet DB will point it to, to the PG tool. And then PG tool will say, okay, now this data should go into the primary master. So I will write it into the primary master. And then now, the data, the new data that comes in is get written into primary master. What happened next is the primary master will replicate the data to the secondary master. Now we have this, but then does it mean that's the end of it? No. What next? This PC tool allows us to separate our read write traffics. So at this point, this is just all read and write traffic to the primary master but pg tool allows us to isolate our read traffic to our secondary master now to reduce the load on the primary master of our database that way our database cluster is now pretty much not too burdened with all the read writes on a single server we can split up the writes and the reads based on the server so here, with our design earlier that we that we look at, we have the hot standby setup and we have the multi-master setup. So these setup are like individual clusters on their own or however you want to see it, right? What PuppetDB could do is we can have multiple PuppetDBs from different locations and whatnot. And all of these PuppetDB can, could be pointing to the same PG tool to the same hot standby cluster and storing the data inside the servers, right? We can achieve that because simply 
this database are all separated from PuppetDB. We do not really need to put PuppetDB in HA. PuppetDB is just redirecting the data and where, where it's supposed to store it. In this case, it's storing in the Postgres. And Postgres, we have our own individual replication or a failover mechanism that is totally independent of PuppetDB. So if you are already using Postgres SQL Server in your organization, and then of course, you have your own failover methods, you have your own failover designs, your HA design for Postgres, I would strongly suggest you to reuse the same setup. You do not have to redesign a brand new setup just to accommodate Puppet. Puppet is designed in a very modular, robust way where it can make use of the existing setup or adapt to the current situation itself. Now, but wait, the next thing here is we always have a question from the security team, infra team, or architecture team that says, what about the DMZ? Our puppet infrastructures are always on the DMZ, right? So, and I do not want my puppet agents on the DMZ to connect to my puppet master on the internal network. So how do I do that? The simple answer is, it's an acceptable risk that you have to accept, right? You can limit the connection that comes from the DMZ on the puppet master. Say, so say that your puppet master is on the internet network. You have to set your firewall to accept puppet connections only from these very, very specific IPs. See, based on the research and survey done, okay, a lot of people will say putting or opening a firewall rule to connect from the DMZ to the internal network is an acceptable risk. It's a risk that we have to take. Or, that's another way that we can say that, we can just simply put a standalone puppet master in a DMZ zone that only caters to the DMZ related service. Right, so that is one another method. There is no fixed strategy on how do we actually design an infrastructure that involves the DMZ because that is a very tricky situation. There is no right answer for that. And most of people would just prefer to make it either you don't manage Puppet in DMZ or take it as an acceptable risk or put a Puppet Master in the DMZ zone that only serve the DMZ server. And that's, that's about it. Plus, your Puppet Master does not need to be accessible directly from the internet. It's only internal access. You can just give it a local access while the internet access is just through the proxy. The next thing here is when you are designing this infrastructure, there's an, a piece of advice that I would like to give to you, whereby a broken puppet infrastructure does not equal to a broken infrastructure. I have a lot of questions that come up to me before. Hey, what happened if my puppet masters go down? Does that mean my infrastructure is in deep trouble? I will simply reply, no. When the puppet infrastructure masters go down, it simply means your puppet agent cannot connect to the puppet master and fetch the latest configuration. That's about it. It will not impact any core services that's running on the agent. It will not impact anything on your infrastructure. It does not break anything. It's still standalone, still functioning as it should. The only thing is it could not connect to the puppet master to pick up all the latest configuration. But then again, I'll make an exception for a certain use case. A broken puppet is a broken infrastructure should puppet is integrated into a specific product 
or a workflow. So let's just say if you have Puppet integrated into your product, triggered by some actions, hooks, or some via dashboards, or in your continuous integration, deployment, process, workflow, then yes, I would say that Puppet, a broken Puppet is a broken infrastructure. But that is why we have the, the uh, architecture designs that we have earlier, right? It's not a complex architecture architecture is a pretty much simple architecture okay to make them work to configure them is a whole different series altogether right uh, this series here this series of this webinar here is just to, to show you what are the possible designs of how we can scale our puppet infrastructure in terms of HA scalability and etc so, I understand that this is a pretty short webinar, but then here, I would like to open out the floor to questions. If you should have any, please type them out in the chat box, so then I will answer your questions. Does anyone have any questions? If you have a question, please type them out in the chat box so that I can see it and so that I can actually uh, answer it. So um, I presume that there is no um, questions. So if this is the case, I would like to thank all of you for attending my webinar. And uh, should you have any more further questions, my colleague Irene will be sending you an email after this with all the slides and the video so that you can review them later again. And um, my email will be on it as well. So if you feel free to email me back if you have any more questions regarding on how to scale your puppet infrastructure or how to design them. And uh, I wish you all a good day. And I hope to see all of you again in our next webinar series. And have a nice day, everyone. And goodbye.